Hi everyone, we're going to learn how to use the filter function in Google Sheets and this is one of many videos designed for sports scientists, strength coaches, and sport coaches for using Google Sheets in a simplistic yet effective way to get the most out of their data and make the most informed decisions that they can. What we have on the left hand side is we have dates, we have athletes, let's pretend like we have a basketball team, their positions, and we have their rating of perceived exertion, or rating of perceived exercise intensity on a scale from 1 to 10. And if we scroll down, we have athletes listed multiple times and dates listed multiple times. And this is how one might collect data, and I think this is a great way to collect data. But it's not the best way to look at the data. So what we can do is we can use the filter function to get a better look at the specific pieces of information that we want to know about and trends of those things. I oftentimes use the filter function to drive graphing and charting. And I also use it to interact with individual player information or positional information or information about a given date. And in this video, we're going to select a player and potentially select a date and view the information just for that player and date without looking through this mishmash of information. So what does the filter function do? Well, let's type it in and find out here. So oh, equals filter, open parenthesis, and it doesn't matter whether or not it's capitalized or not. I'm, I just... I, I have this thing where I, I just need to have it capitalized. I don't know why. Oh, and when I bring it down, it's covered a little bit. So let's move it over here. Equals filter, open parenthesis. And the first thing that it asks for is a range. And this is similar to our similar to sort and unique and all the other dynamic array functions, is it'll return the range that you give it. So if we select four columns here, it will bring back four columns. So let's start by doing that, where I'm going to click on A to A, hold down shift, and click on D. So we're going from column A to column D, everything in them. That's our range, comma. And now, what do we want to filter the information by? Well, let's say that we only want the information if it's from 10, 15, 20, 20. Then we could say, and I'm trying to click on A to A, so our condition is when A to A equals, and you have to do date, because it's it's a date field, date, open parenthesis, which is another function, the year is 2020, comma, the month is 10, comma, and the day is 15, comma, or close it off. And we'll close off that, and we just did the filter function. We said we want everything in this entire range only when the date is equal to 10, 15, 20, 20. If I click enter, now we have a new data set and this is all the data for that day. So this could be like a daily report and we could go in and change, oh, well today's the 16th, so maybe we change that to the 16th of uh, October 2020 and click enter. And now the data will be for the 16th. Now that's a pretty, I mean, yeah, you could do it that way, but the way that I like to do it is say, I don't want to type in the date every time I want this formula to change. I want to select the date maybe from here. So I'm going to type in 10, 16, 2020 here. And instead of typing it in as A to A equals date, I'm going to remove this and say, I want everything in this range when A to A equals whatever I type into that cell and click enter. And we'll notice that nothing changes. But now, this data set is driven by what we type in here. So if I type in 1017, now the data changes to be 1017. And we control it from here. The way that you add functionality to this, for example, typing in a date isn't that easy either, is you can make this into a drop down menu of dates that you have available. And one way that you could do that is, oh, I don't even see it here. I didn't even notice that. Wow. So I just opened up the the bar down here um we'll go to insert or sorry we'll go to data data validation and we want a list from a range and let's pick where we want our list to come from and i'll click on this 
here to select our range. I'll start right here, A2, and I'll drag it all the way down, all the way down through our data set. And I don't advise doing this. I advise making it a range that goes far beyond the data set that you'll ever have so that the drop down list accommodates. But I'll click OK and click Save. And now what we have is we have this little drop down list of all of our dates. And we can kind of just pick them on the fly to control what happens here. Now let's say that we don't want to look at all the players. We're just interested in one player. We want this to show the information for one player because it's, it's an individual player dashboard, if you will. We can add another argument to this filter function. So not only does A to A have to equal the date that we select, but also, comma, we need B to B, which I can't click on, but I'll type it in, B to B, which is our name column, comma, or, or sorry, not comma. We need B to B to be equal to, let's do in quotes, let's say we just want to look at Laquan James, end quote, and close that off and click enter. Now we just have the data for that person on that date. But again, typing in these names is probably not that fun. So what we can do is we can type in the name Laquan James here and change our formula to say instead of looking at Laquan James in quotes, we want to look at this cell here. Click enter and nothing will change. But if we change the name here to be Raul Pierce, the data will change to be for that player. And now what you might want to do, again, because typing things in is not that fun, is we can go to data, data validation, and create a list of players by clicking on this here and selecting our range of the names that we want. And I'm just going to drag it all the way down. You could just as easily do this up here where I type in B2 to B1000. Click enter and click save. And let's scroll up to the top here. And now we can quickly pick a player of interest and we'll get the data for that player. And if we wanted to see that, if we want to see all dates for that player, we would change this filter function to say, you know what, we don't actually care about the date. We only care about when the player is equal to the player that we select. And if I click enter, now we see all the data for that player. And if we can select any player that we want, and the data will now be for that player. We just keep on selecting players and look at their information. So that is how you use the filter function. And oftentimes, it's combined with other functions to make things really dynamic. But I hope that you got something out of this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you enjoy the content in general, please subscribe by clicking the bell. It means a lot to me. YouTube um, understands when things are liked and subscribed to, and then they show that stuff to more people. And if this is helping you, hopefully it'll help more people. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.